So the structural design in my house is essentially shotcrete sprayed over a steel frame skeleton. In this early cross-section sketch you can see that I originally planned to use steel I-beams. I've seen several designs from various companies that did it this way, including Formworks Incorporated. Essentially these are 4x3 I-beams curved, bolted to the ground and then covered with a matrix of rebar to catch the shotcrete. I did try to contact Formworks, but their design services were not nearly flexible enough for the sort of unique home that I wanted to build. And also their prefabricated steel arches were very expensive. And the 4x3 structural steel I-beams that they were using were much stronger than I needed for my smaller spans anyway. My overly complicated design includes three groin vaults, three apses, ten radial vaults of three different sizes, a portion of a toroidal vault that's a donut vault, and one simple cylinder section over the mudroom. In some cases, those steel arches are sitting on precast concrete ribs or spanning between shotcrete walls. There was a lot to plan out. Here's an early PowerPoint sketch to show the basic construction. The box at the bottom is a cross-section of those precast concrete ribs. You can see how the steel supports the concrete and takes the load into that rib, which will then eventually take it down to the ground. Then this is a wall section that the architect drew. Here you can see that after the concrete cures, it supports the weight of the earth above. Originally I had a mixture of both square and round tubes, depending on where they were placed. But I ended up switching to all square tubes because it's stronger in its primary load direction and it costs less. But I later discovered that it's harder to roll without collapsing. And some of the roll companies wanted me to use much thicker steel in order to prevent that deformation. Which of course raises the price back up. These radial vaults that were spanning the curved ribs were the most tricky to plan out. This is a sort of a false view that I came up with where the precast ribs and the arches are both shown sideways even though the arches would really be perpendicular to the ribs. For the radial vaults, I basically set things up so that the tops of the vaults would be level even as the ribs radiated outwards. For me this was just a mathematical problem relating the, the theta, which is the, the angle between the two ribs and the radius distance from the center of the home, which would then give you the radius of each of those steel arches. It got a bit more complicated when I had to bump the kitchen radially outward to make some extra floor space and to make room between the, the kitchen and the mudroom. But the basic solution was just lowering the kitchen ribs to keep them below that sloped line that the, the equation calculated. The architect did his own study with a 3D model using Rhino and came up with this. This would be the view of the dining room transition vault. He then ended up with this drawing set which wasn't quite right. The architect's bedroom layout was also a bit off, especially because he ran vaults out to the front and back walls and I'd wanted them to sort of taper off so the earth would spill over them. When I asked for revisions, he decided that those details were really part of the shop drawings that were not included in my fixed price contract. It really should have looked more like my 3D model with these half ellipses at the corners, which give it that rounded effect so that the dirt can spill off. Anyway, I put these shop drawings together myself. I got rough quotes on all the pieces before construction started. And in one case, one company would provide the steel to another who would then roll each piece for $75 regardless of the size. When I realized that I was being charged for the roll, the number of rolls, regardless of whether it was a full arch or a half arch, I decided to order full arches and cut them in half even for all the apses. I made all the drawings this way so it wouldn't be any confusion for them. For instance, this drawing shows the ellipse as a full 180 degrees, but I'll actually cut it in half before it's installed. Simple radii are easy to cold roll, but ellipses are much harder because they do it manually back and forth with the machine and they wanted a full-size printout of the ellipse so they could literally lay the steel down on the printout to check its curvature. Uh, the guys in the shop called it more of an art than a science. To make that full-size chart drawing, I'd have to go to a printer and they charge by the square foot. And the costs go up considerably for those larger formats of paper. So I considered various possibilities to print only the section that I needed without all that empty space under the arch. But it was still going to be quite a hassle. From the start of my planning, I had designed this house with a Euclidean principle so that it could be drawn out easily with just a pencil and a string and a nail. So I decided to buy a large tarp and draw out the full-scale ellipse using the old pencil and string method. The focal distance from the center is just the square root of a squared minus b squared, and the rest was pretty easy, although not quite idiot-proof. We started by spreading out the tarp and pinning it down so it wouldn't move around. I found the rough center and then measured out to my foci. Instead of putting nails into the actual ground, I just taped them to the tarp. I put the string in the right places and drew the first part of the ellipse. Then I had to shift the tarp to take care of the other side because there wasn't room in my garage to do it all at once. 
The second time around, I had an idea and I made a little car out of Lego that held the Sharpie and had these little pulley wheel on it to hold the string so I could slide it easily. And that really worked quite well. It's too bad it's too dark for you to see it in this video. I got to see them rolling the steel and uh, took some video. Here you can see a straight piece going in one side and three wheels are set up to bend it a little so that it curves as it passes through and they would send it back and forth measuring occasionally across the, the diameter until it was just the right radius. And they had to be careful not to go too fast or they would collapse the steel. A couple weeks later they were all done and they called me in to inspect and pay and they had set up one of the ellipses on a tarp so I could see the alignment. It's pretty close. In the end it turned out they were charging me about three rolls for each ellipse. Basically they were ellip rolling three sections and then welding them together and then manually tweaking it to get it pretty close to the elliptical. I could have saved hundreds of dollars by skipping out on the ellipses so I hope the shape they give is worth it at the end. The other arches were all labeled and set around in the area. They'd also measured and cut all the straight leg segments for me so that everything was ready to weld. We set up a delivery time for the next business day. I was working while they delivered, but I showed up later to check it out. This weekend my sister will be in town and hopefully we can start to weld the legs onto the arches. And maybe we'll even have time to set some of them up.